Danielle Vidaro, and I currently work in aerospace. I work for Boeing. So I get to spend a lot of time working with our airline customers all around the world, using my engineering degree to sell and market products and services that make our airplanes much more efficient and much more safe. One of the reasons why I'm extremely passionate about engineering is because engineering is a field where you truly can bring solutions to the table that solve problems that really matter. What you're doing as an engineer is you're making the world a better place and that's a very empowering place to, to, be, to be part of. We're back on Nerd Girl Nation with Danielle Vadaro and via Zoom Technology, Katherine Young. Hi. Hello. Hey. It's very special for me today because Danielle was one of my undergraduate students at Tufts University. 2007? 2007, 2007 is when we, gra when when we graduated. graduated. Yeah. So she was one of my nerd girls and we've worked together and stayed in touch ever since. Now you have something new to look forward to? Yes, I do. I'm very excited to share. My husband and I are expecting twins and yay! Which is both awesome and scary. What were you more excited about, finding out you were going to have twins or coming on Nerd Girl Nation? Ooh, it's a tough one. <laughs> Very different, but kind of similar emotions. Yeah. Um, a lot more responsibility with the twins thing. Oh, with the twins. It, it, I would have yeah. said with coming yeah. on Nerd yeah, Girl Nation. Yeah, but less, less nauseating. L less nauseating on Nerd Girls, for sure. I'm, I still have morning sickness when I, <laughs> before I come to this set. Do you? Okay. Oh, yeah. You were one of the original Nerd Girls. What was the esteemed doctor back in the day like? Oh, my God. Gosh, honestly, Karen looks just as good. I don't think a thing has changed. She's still got the same energy, yeah. same confidence. Tell them what we built together. Yeah, we built a solar car. Oh, I saw that on a Nerd yep. Girls thing. That was one of my coolest engineering experiences yeah. and getting a chance to, to work on something that was tangible that you could see and touch and realize that I'm a mechanical engineer, but I work with electrical engineers and I work with you know civil engineers and I have to actually, when I'm installing parts, call up a supplier and say, hey, do you have this composite panel? You know, And then when you're looking at jobs in the real world, you can say to yourself, oh, this is really cool. This makes sense. I mean, now I literally do that at Boeing. Do you want to see us back then in the Kinda, day? Yeah. Right, let's, let's take a look at this. <laughs> They're building a race car that's totally solar powered. That's not all. There's things that you don't even think about on a daily basis that engineers basically are behind. Like I have friends that want to do, that are in chemical engineering that want to do makeup. Engineers aren't just plain builders and car builders. Like the options are really, really cool. I can't believe that was 10 years ago. <laughs> Dr. Karen, uh, what was Nerd Girls originally? Was it like the traveling pants or have I got this incorrect? <laughs> no, actually it was they hired me to be a mentor for women and then when I got there, there were none. So I had to go out and recruit my own girls, my own posse. Okay. So the way I had to do that was show them that using science and technology, you can pretty much solve any world problem. That's why we pick some big community-based problems. Mm -hmm. And back then it was all about showing that you can dress the way you want, look the way you want, have diverse interests and that those diverse interests really are what make you um, a nerd girl. Karen, you've been a huge role model to me and have always kind of shown us that it's important to be who you are regardless of what people think or what the stereotypes might make you feel like. Catherine, what are you seeing out there? Are you seeing that things are changing for the perceptions of what smart girls do? One thing I'm really amazed with is how many men have reached out to me. How many men have um, kind of check themselves. You redesigned the cover of a magazine that you saw. These are the actual covers. The one on the left is the original and the one on the right is Catherine's. What motivated you to do this? Honestly, my biggest motivation of the whole thing was the words, wake up pretty, next to a girl <laughs> who had a professional team get her ready, plus photoshopping afterwards. That's one heck of a message to send. It was just such a subtle middle finger up to, <laughs> to <laughs> everything that you're not meant to be and that you could possibly be. Is that is that something that we sort of do without even knowing that we're doing? We're like, hey, boys, you can do inventions. And hey, girls, here's makeup and here's a bunch of shit that's pink. <laughs> I also looked at all the different titles and it looked like everything was about 
how you look in relationships with boys, like how you are perceived by the opposite sex. Really, my goal was just to make the covers equal. If there's a cover for boys about becoming an astronaut, becoming an artist, you know, having a dream career, then there, there can be a cover for girls. What's the, been the reaction? Oh, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. One thing I'm really amazed with is a lot of fathers have reached out and said, you know, I tell my son I'm proud of his accomplishments, and my daughter, I always just say, oh, you're so pretty. And I got to tell her, good job in that math test, you know, good job on kicking that goal. And I think that little piece it has been huge for me. Do you get pissed off at chivalry still? Like, if I opened your door, would you yell at me for that? I don't, actually. I think it's no. a, sh a show of respect. Okay, um, cool. I agree. Same, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, we, we still like that. You do? We do, yeah. we love it. Yeah. Where's the line drawn? Because I'll <laughs> open the door, I'll pay for dinner, I'll like walk on the outside closest to the gutter. Oh, which you know I don't that. know why okay. I'm doing that. Apparently, used mud used out. to come yep. off the... No, they used to throw the garbage out the windows. So Is that what it was? And other things in feces, yes. Where does chivalry end and sexism begin? Hmm. Um, I think when you just think one is less than the other. I think both men and women come to the table with different strengths, but if you're comparing them on sort of a scale in your mind that one is not as good as, that's where feminism comes in, and that's where we have to realize that we're, we're looking at people equally. And I think it's also a piece of just understanding that people like to feel loved and taken care of, but also letting the person feel that in situations that they can take care of themselves when they need to and not making them feel like they need the help. It's just a nice gesture. It kind of shows caringness and concern. I also think men need to mentor women more. You know, it's just stepping up and realizing, oh, hey, you know, maybe I could groom her to take my place instead of him. My business mentor outside of doing entertainment is actually a female and she scares the shit out of me. So <laughs> it's also cool to get a mentor if you're a male who can also be female because it makes you reassess a lot more. And that's certainly something that I've found working with a female that close. That's really awesome. And I think it's important that we all work together to lift each other up. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add one more piece to that, Kathleen. You made me think of something that came up in, in my work workspace is that we forget that we don't have to be like men. We can go into a meeting and show our compassion and show our teaming effort and show our ability to empathize, and that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think we constantly get these impressions and stereotypes that you cannot be a leader or successful unless you're that type of guy. And you don't have to be a man. You can be a woman in those roles and show the different characteristics and components that make you unique, and that also has to be celebrated in that environment. Yeah, it's a super valid point. Yeah. One of the things that we're finding now is that you can be noticed for different things and when you're talking to a millennial, it's almost as important, if not more important now, to be taken seriously with respect as much as it is to get attention and to focus on what attention it is that you want, not just attention itself. Would you say that's probably right? Yes, I love that description. Having brains is definitely sexy. Thank you for, for noticing. Uh, you know what? I get objectified on this show. <laughs> and it's about time someone realized that it's what the inside of Lowy that counts. What would be the biggest message you'd want to give nerd girls or piece of advice you'd want to give nerd girls? You stick with what you love and you don't let anybody stop you. And when they do, you, as Craig would say, uh, well, he, Craig would say it differently, but I say you tell them where to go. Where would that be? <laughs> where, would, where would that be, Dr. To, to the moon. <laughs> to the moon, Alice. Yeah, to the, to the moon. moon. Thank you so much, ladies, for being with us here on Nerd Girl Nation. <laughs>